One day I went to steal chocolate in my father's office. Well, I opened the cupboard and there what I did I see? A wonderful picture of an interesting man. It was, it was Lea Baba. So I went to ask my mother, who is this man? He, she said, it's Mir Baba. I said, I out of the wish to see Mir Baba, to see this man. So Baba happened to come to Zurich just a short while afterwards. After that time, I felt, well, I, this is a man who will see and know everything about me. And I was scared. So Baba left again, saying that somebody was missing who should have had to meet him. Then, two or three months later, Mrs. Mertens told us that Baba was coming to Cannes and he would like to have somebody to come to help in the household, which I did. So I came to Cannes and there I was meeting the first time Baba personally, which was a great joy and a shock at the same time. In there I was staying in the house where the girls stood, where the girls lived, very strict, in very strict seclusion. And in the other house were living the guests and the men. We were about 15 people, wearing sometimes. And as the cook fell out, I had to start to do the cooking in a hot, in a hot kitchen, all with fuel stove and no electricity, nothing at all. But with Baba, things go well. Everything goes all right. And and the time there was was grand. It was with many upheavals in every way. It was something absolutely new. I asked Sen Baba, could I come to India one day? Which Baba and the girls said was very, very difficult. And it's very few Westerners will be able to stand in Baba's presence. So then, uh, well, well, I gave up the hope. There were many upheavals there. Tears, joys, which I can't all exactly explain. We, we had just one thing, we had a wonderful time. All the, all the work, the heat, everything didn't count. After a while, uh, Baba left for Paris with the girls. I was a few days alone, which was realizing, making me realize how hard it was suddenly to stay again without Baba. Well, after some time, uh, after many things happened there, Baba left. And I was left, I was felt, I felt like a fish out of water, or like a flower without sun or rain. I left home feeling sad and lonely, taking with me the lovely dog which Baba had gave, given me, Samoyed, a great white big dog which Baba had gave, given me. Samoyed, a great white big dog, and Elizabeth's dog, Kippy, to keep for her until she returned from America. Then uh, a letter came to Mrs. Merton's. We could come to India if we were fully prepared to renounce everything, really everything, to give up everything to live just at the master's order which we hoped to do. We even bought our own beds on, on, on the boat. As Norina told us, as Norina told us, we wouldn't get even a bed. We sailed in the middle of April 1938, Norina Machabelli, Hedy Mertens, Helen Dam, and myself. And it was a really memorable trip. It was hot in the in the Red Sea, it was monsoon time, and still the entity of coming near Baba was great. Well, I sent a cable to Baba asking him if I would really be fit, as I was full of doubts, not of Baba, but of my capability of joining such a great master like him. Well, I think this somehow Seemed, this cable seemed to be somehow misunderstood in India. When I arrived, Norina came on the boat saying that if I had doubts, I should return with the next boat. Well, I couldn't explain to her that I didn't have doubts of Baba, but my doubts were of myself, of being capable 
of living up to a master's wishes. Uh, then I told Noreen, Baba to, had told Noreen to tell me to immediately take next boat and return. Well, I then said no. I had come to India because I wanted to meet Baba, and if after I have met him he would send me back, I would be willing to go, but not before. Which Baba agreed. Of course, I was all the goings on in Bombay, the four days we were there, was all uh, drowned for me. They were sightseeing, uh, uh, reporters came to see us, but for me, I was only longing to see Baba, and all the rest didn't interest me at all. We came to Amenagar and stayed in the camp until the house on the Merabir Hill would be ready for us to stay. There we had a w one room together. Nadine Tolstoy, H Heidi Mertens, Helen Dam, and myself. Helen Dam was used to always stay alone, so for her it was hard. Heidi was ill, myself, I got very soon, I got jaundice and malaria, and I had a very, very great care of Baba himself. He used to every day ask how my health was, how everything, how I was keeping, and uh, I could not have been better in any other place. Even they brought the chief medical doctor of the Naga hospital to see what was wrong with me. After a while, when we were better, we went to Merabad on the hill and started ashram life. First, I had the animals in charge, and later I was working with Nadine in the hospital. And after that, many things happened. We left on a tour to to India, uh, first to Arangan, Secunderabad. After a while, when we were better, we went to Merabad on the hill and started ashram life. First, I had the animals in charge, and later I was working with Nadine in the hospital. And after that, many things happened. We left on a tour to, to India, uh, first to Arangan, Secunderabad, and toured in a toured in the bus all round India. Well, during this time we had certain orders, and I don't remember each now in succession how they were. If we were not to touch money, we were not to touch men, we were not to 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 uh, go outside the compound, except if, if it was with the permission of Baba. We were not to uh, to eat anything in between meals. We, we kept our rules. We sometimes we had to meditate. Sometimes we had to get we had to get up early. We had to go to bed late. We had to try to keep our minds clear, not to have wrong not wrong thoughts not to think bad of each other, which was very difficult, because Baba puts up, not puts also up the worst part in us that we, we can see where, is, where things have to be changed in our own selves. And after a time, things, although it was so happy, one was so happy to be near Baba, but it was very hard too, because he would always put you in a position where you would be, it would always sort of be um, a test whether you would live up to what Baba told you or whether you would do what you own thought best, and that always came out wrong. After some time, we when after the tour, we, we, we stayed many places, we had also hardships. I think Baba made these tours, not only to show us India, but also because he wanted to, to be us to be calm and poised in any, every situation that could possibly take place. For instance, arriving late in the evening on a, uh, in a small dark bungalow and uh, with no, no beds, no chairs, nothing, not even proper toilet, practically no water, and to keep cheerful after a dusty long journey in a bus halt over those bad roads, all bumping up and down, with, with, with meals which were all right, but sometimes got sour. But still, with Baba, you, you sort of didn't feel all that so much. Still, then the monthly were too tired that they should take our bedding rolls down. Well, we slept on the floor, on the hard floor. We tried our best 
on which side we could lie without having too many to feel the hard floor too much and not to notice too much the cockroaches running around over you at night and all the frogs coming through the room or something because you had to keep a little bit the windows open to get air. Still, uh, one is still alive and things are not so bad. That was all right.